Hi everybody, and welcome back to Metroid Prime. In the last episode, we did quite a few things, actually. We did a bit of backtracking all the way to Tell Nova World, but it, it wasn't too bad. Whoa, Jesus, hello. Right at the corner of the screen there, right immediately we have a Shigoth. And in the last episode, we uh, picked up a couple of upgrades, picked up the Space Jump, which is essentially double jump, and we also picked up the Wave Beam, which I can now demonstrate on the Shigoth that just comes charging in from the corner of the screen. And uh, the Wave Beam is an electrical attack. We also learned about the the artifacts in the Artifact Temple, and uh, we picked up a few of those as well. But uh, we didn't actually explore too much of Fendrana in the last episode. We uh, only explored the, the Ice Temple on the, on the hill over that way. But uh, in today's episode, we're actually going to be exploring a little bit further to the south question mark I don't know which direction we're heading in but we're heading in this direction and we've had this way before but uh now that we have the wave beam there was this purple door that we couldn't unlock hello there Bomu I somehow dragged you right into me there even though I thought I was in the doorway and let's go through this door here and we're in the ice ruins west again or is this the east one I'm I'm so confused okay it is west wait which one's east is this east over it Okay, just trying to get my bearings back, because I haven't played this game in a in a little while, and uh, I'm a little bit lost. Anyway, a couple of Shigoths in this room. I don't really need to be dealing with them, but I will anyway. Otherwise, they're just probably going to get in my way and start hurling projectiles at me from a distance. There's one down. Wave Beam makes short work of them, because uh, it briefly electrocutes them. And, hmm, I don't think I can do, like, the, what's it called, the missile pumping with the Wave Beam. Maybe it's only with the regular regular charge shots. I'm not 100% sure. So my cursor is starting to act up already. That's a good sign of things to come for this episode. I thought I locked onto you, but I did not. I just shot straight past you. Please kill this this crystallite before he uh, runs into me. Okay, and now that we have the space jump boots, we can uh, climb a little bit higher up in this room. And up this way, I believe, there should be a missable scan that I completely forgot about. Oh, it's actually not this one, but yeah, this is missable as well. <laughs> Funny that. There's two missable scans in this room. Uh, this one isn't missable yet. There are multiple of these in the game. They're sort of like the blast shields on doors. Um, this is a stalactite. And we knock them down and they serve as platforms. We can only get the vantage point on the stalactites from here. If that car could shut up outside, that'd be very nice. Bloody loud vehicle outside. Gee, sorry about that. And uh, yeah, as soon as we knock it down, it becomes... Uh, unavailable to be scanned. And the same applies to all stalactites, and there are a few of them. I think in Magmore Caverns as well. But uh, yeah, Fendrandarus and Magmore Caverns are the only place where the stalactites appear. But once they've been, they've been knocked down, you can't scan them anymore. So that's why they're missable. Same with the uh, blast shields, the missile shields on the door. And uh, the other missable scan in this area is up there, and this is the one that I was talking about before. But I just completely forgot about them. And yeah, there must be something about uh, ice variations that makes them missable. But uh, yeah, the ice shriek bats, same with the uh, ice burrowers and the ice parasites we've seen in uh, previous episodes. But yeah, just something about the ice enemies that they just disappear after a while. And if, in fact, the ice shriek bats will be will be gone by the end of the episode because uh, yeah, we're gonna gonna trigger something that makes them disappear. And then we have a strangely Chozo ruins looking corridor. Uh, this is the uh, courtyard entryway, apparently. And uh, yeah, it's full of, uh, full of scarabs. We haven't seen them since uh, Chozo Ruins. Also, there's a bomber in here as well. Oh, got, got that creepy Samus eye reflection in our visor there. It sort of freaked me out a bit. Okay, uh, that just ran straight through some more scarabs. Let's see if I can get some health pickups. Although it doesn't really matter. I'm only on 86. Doesn't actually matter too much. And uh, yeah, this is the courtyard. Just threw this away. And it's a pretty, pretty big room. But it's... Uh, not particularly complex, I'd say. There's a spider ball track over there, as you can see, right away. But uh, the main point of interest over here is this spinner device. Let's drive in and use our boost ball to keep it shut. Opens up these uh, garg gargoyle-like structures up top. Please do not roll backwards too far, Samus. Just automatically rolling, rolling out there, there. And there is a, another spinner slot on the other side. And there is a uh, this is like a weird, weird mechanism. Don't really understand why we have to do two boost balls, followed by a morph ball. But yeah, there's two spinner slots. They open both valves on. Uh, I think there's four, 
four of the gargoyle structures up top. And as soon as we open them, we can now head up here and use this morphful bomb slot. And I don't believe I've ever scanned one of these. Uh, it is a mechanism that you can scan. It does get up to the logbook. Yeah, it's a standard morphful slot. Put a, put a bomb in it. Could have scanned that a long time ago. I just completely, completely slipped my mind. And uh, yeah, let's hop in. And I'm going to have to do this twice because there's a collectible in this room that, uh, well, uh, I don't have to grab it just yet, but uh, it is an energy tank and, well, I kind of want to have as much energy as possible as soon as, soon as it's available. So yeah, upon activating that multiple bomb slot, uh, the water rises, lifting all these platforms up. Oh yeah, I forgot about these uh, these whirring things, I've got the, what they're called. And uh, yeah, what we need to do is hop into this hole over here, which is only available... Well, maybe it's not only available when the water's up, but yeah, down here is where the energy tank is. And I think it's a one-way passage. Can I get back up the way I came? Uh, that, is that the way in? Where's the way out? This room is very small, and yet I cannot see a thing. <laughs> um, I hope you don't mind uh, confined spaces. Okay, so I think this is the exit hole. But I think... Can I just roll back up the way I came? rather than having to activate the multiple bomb slot again. He's out, and from here... Ooh. I don't know. Bit bit of an iffy jump, I'd say. Uh, let's deal with these guys, because they'll probably just... probably barge into me if I leave them be for too long. Oh, no. They scatter when you try and shoot at them. I'm getting some hits. What's going on with my cursor? It's not like flickering around the screen, but it's like... disappearing out of existence every so often. Okay, there's one down. Um, I swear there were more than that, but they've just completely gone. Okay, so can I make this jump, or can I... It's a low ceiling. There must be some kind of jump I can make from here. Huh! Huh! Oh, no, no, okay, never mind. Gonna have to do the morph ball bomb slot again. Oh, well. It was worth a shot, trying to skip a few steps ahead. Oops, a daisy. Can't see the platform beneath my feet. It's the problem with 3D. Also, I'm trying to be hasty here. And it's just making me mess up a little bit more. So I'm not looking in the direction that I'm jumping. <sighs> I thought I knew where the platforms were, but alas, I do not know this game as well as I thought. Okay, let's bring those platforms back up again. And this time, let's get to the middle platform and then get up to the top of this room. And okay. Uh, I think I can jump directly over here. Skip a few platforms, don't really need to use all of them. And make it up to the top. From here we have a choice of three ways to go, but not really. Well, over in this direction first of all we have a missile blast shield on the door, and behind this door is a save station. I feel like they sort of partially indicate which rooms are save stations in. I phrase that poorly. By uh, blast shields on the doors. But that sort of gets dropped later on. I thought, it'd be, I thought it was a nice way of indicating which rooms were, you know, save rooms, but no, that's not something consistent. And over this way we have a deactivated door with a, a certain certain structure above, which you might recognise because we saw a few of them in the Chozo ruins as well, and it's made of cordite, and we can't deal with cordite just yet, and this door has no power. You have no power here! <laughs> and. Uh, that leaves only one way to go, and that's through this wave beam door over this way. And prepare yourself. Or well, through this door, you have a new enemy. Or an old enemy. There's a tower up there. Uh, let's deal with that ahead of time. So, the wave beam deals with turrets a little bit differently than other weapons, in that it makes them malfunction if you hit them with a, a charged wave beam shot. They just get electrified and start shooting around directions. And I know there's another enemy. Hello! Yes, there is a... Uh, a space pirate in here. We uh, can't get through the door, but that's kind of frightening. Uh, I don't believe it's actually a space pirate, I believe it's like a shadow pirate. Also, I can't scan it because it's in a different room. I can't get in there! Can you uh, move out the way of the doorway, please? I mean, I can target it and I can shoot at it, but I can't scan it. Hmm, that seems like a bit of a weird thing that's going on it. Can I get in really close? Nope. It's going to knock me out as soon as I try and get in there. Okay, well. I'm going to turn my back and walk away, and hopefully things will reset so that then I can actually enter the room. I do not like this guy because he tends to block the doorway quite a lot, and he's still there. Uh, do you mind just 
Let me, let me in. Let me in. Okay. Stun you. Roll through. And he did damage to me. And he's pushing me out again. What the? Stop it. I want to scan you. You're a shadow pirate. And I can't get in. Boost ball. Boost ball. Come on. Get in there. Get through the bloody door. Okay. Well, this is the, the most optimum space pirate, space pirate guard of everything I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not going to get the chance to scan it. So let's just electrify him and move past him. Oh, screw that guy. That was annoying. Oh, how dare he block the doorway. But uh, yeah, space pirate guard. This is a space pirate base. <laughs> Doors. Oops, sorry, I accidentally hit the home button there. Didn't mean to inter interrupt that cutscene. But yes, here we have space pirates, and a lot of them. They're a little bit more active than they were in uh, Frigate Orphean. Most of them were lying dead in the Frigate Orphean. But now uh, we are in their home turf. Let's have a quick scan of one of these guys. And these are regular pirates. I th believe we saw flying pirates in the last episode, but yes, these are these are the regular guys. They're standard ground-faring troops, and uh, they're actually pretty vulnerable to the wave beam that we picked up just in the last episode. And yeah, just hit them with a fully charged wave beam shot, and then and then a missile, and that's enough to take them out. Also leaves them stunned on the ground for quite a while there. Over in this general direction, we have a map station from this room, and uh, it's the map of Fendron and Drifts. If you haven't scanned a map station before, scan them now because they are missable. Once again, once you activate the map. You can no longer scan the station, so do it before you download the map. And now we have a full map of Fendrana Drifts. Well, not really, because it does get cut off halfway through. There's still still a little bit of Fendrana, just over in the general thiswards direction. Hang on, I'm, uh, uh, which way is that? It's like southeast. Yeah, still missing a little bit. But uh, we do have a full map of like the space part, space part area. Uh, the tension definitely ramps up at this point. Because we are no longer alone on Talon 4, although I don't think we we're, were ever alone on Talon 4. But uh, yeah, now we know there is intelligent life here, and it's uh, yeah the space pirates are here, and they're conducting research. This is their lab. Also, there is another turret up there. Don't really want to be using wave beam for this, so yeah, use one wave beam shot and then use a missile. That should be enough. If uh, when they malfunction, they start shooting around wildly, and y you can take damage from that. So if you want to be safe, then. Uh, still use missiles on them. Just don't don't use the wave beam. It's my advice. It's, and it's pretty good advice. Okay, got more bomb moves coming down these corridors. So they just do not disappear. And through here we have a big, big force field, followed by a whole bunch of space pirates beyond it. It'll probably just come charging in as soon as I lower this barrier. And here we have Research Lab Hydra, uh, the first of two space pirate research labs around here. Hello. Oh, you're a shadow part. I can scan you, I can scan you. If you would stop, stop, stop that. Oh no, that's a regular space part. Uh, please, what, what are you doing? Get back. Stop doing this. It's so annoying, pinning me in the corner. Not an awful lot I can do, I don't really have a, a parry like uh, Sam's Returns or anything like that. Just uh, bat them away in an instant. I'm sure there are more space parts around this somewhere, but uh, I bet they're on the upper floor. However, around here, we have a bunch of uh, bunch of monitors, and here's where I'm going to put into effect what I said in the last episode, in that there are some red points here, and these are all added to the logbook. They are all pirate data. And I believe in this room there are like five bits of pirate data. So yeah, that's something that I definitely don't want to have up on screen for too long. Uh, there's four on the lower floor, and I think there's one on the upper floor. So yeah, let me just quickly run around the room and scan all the relevant points of information. And then I'll add them to description. And finally, I think this is the last one on the lower floor in Hydra. Anyway, I know there are more later on in this area. So, okay, yep. Oh. And that actually got us a nice little achievement there. We've now scanned 50% of the logbook. Congratulations to us. What a pointless endeavour. Okay, let's scan this point. And this activates an elevator. Now we can head up to the upper floors where more pirates await us, probably. <laughs> 
almost definitely. Oh, hello. Drop down right in front of me. Wave beam missile. Fully charged wave beam missile. Easy enough. I'm still waiting for another shadow pirate to appear so I can scan it. I know they're not a missable scan, so I'm not too worried about it, but I do want to scan it as soon as possible. Oops, there is a wall in the way there. Please stop trying to run into me, jeez, so annoying. At least I'm getting all my missiles back. There is another turret up there. Wave beam, and... Oh yeah, the uh, fully charged wave beam shots uh, also have the homing properties, same as missiles. Uh, oh god, there's one more space pirate. God, there's so many in this room. And I believe that's it. This carcass just slumps to the ground there. Okay, so where is that last research point? Is it down this way? You know, they're just regular scan points. I'm so confused. Where is that last point? Is this the one? Probably. Yep, okay. I think that's the last one in this room. If not, then I'll just... Uh, they're, not, they're not missable scans at all. And also we pass back through this area later on. So yeah, if I do miss something, then I'll be sure to scan on the way back through. Also, something else of interest in this room. Uh, just this, this one container here that's completely sealed up. Uh, you can hear the humming of an item inside it, and it's made of cordite, and we can't deal with cordite yet, so just keep that in mind for uh, later. And when I say later, I mean pretty soon. Okay, up through here. Oh, hello, turret. Uh, let's hide behind the stack of crates. Can't see me. Oh, yep, apparently you can. Okay, a couple of missiles. Don't even bother using wave beam. Just pump missiles into it. There we go. God, I'm taking way too much damage, honestly. I really need to be a bit more careful. Oh, there's one more turret. <gasps> Don't shoot at me. Oh, that was weird. It looked like it was it was charging a shot, but it wasn't shooting at me. Yeah, that was uh, a little bit strange. Okay, and I believe through this way is a big, another big room, full of oh hello, space pirates hit again. Oh, well that's weird. Why is there an invisible wall right there, rather than in the doorway? It's just, and how was I dodging all those shots? That was weird. Like a Matrix-style uh, bullet, bullet, was it bullet time? Is that the right word? God. But you know, I haven't actually seen the Matrix, so apologies for my lack of knowledge on the subject there. But it looked like I was dodging those, uh, those shots from all directions there. Okay, and there we go. All the space parts there dealt with. There's probably more, though. We are in the space part territory after all. Yep. Oh, hello. Another one jumps up, and yet again he's blocked by a random invisible wall. And, uh, oh, hello. <laughs> fell into that cage in the middle there. Okay, so this is the observatory. And it's a pretty major room for, uh, for lore, actually. Because it does reveal a little bit about the planet we're on currently, Talon 4. There are a few other things. So there's a bit of health there. I do require. Actually, no, it doesn't matter about health because, uh, if I recall correctly, there's a save room nearby. But anyway, the main purpose of this room is to scan this to activate some kind of holographic sequence, apparently. And this is a weird convoluted... not even a puzzle, I'd say. It's like... I don't know. Just a weird sequence of events. Jump up here, enter a multiple bomb slot, activate it, which does something to the projectors around the room, possibly. I don't know why we have to waste all this time and effort powering one single machine. It's just a case of platforming around the room and finding the next bomb slot. And here it is, up here. And this is the last bomb slot, I think. After we activate that, it makes the thing in the middle activate, and then we have four spinners in each of the corners that we now have to go into each of them in turn and activate them, because this isn't tedious at all. What are you talking about? Let's uh, activate one, one, two. Ah, 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 oh, I'm so, so bored of this already. D just to activate this one machine, we have to do all this, all this garbage. And there we go. And that's how the universe was born. But no, there is something else of vital importance at the top of this room. But before we go up there, we can scan a few of these little planets. Even though they're like holograms, we still scan them. That one is important. But that one is... Is that one Town 4? Yes, that's the planet we're currently on. And yes, that delivers some grim news for, for Town 4. 
estimate to become a, a wasteland, apparently, uh, in like 25 years' time. How unfortunate. And yeah, there are more planets to scan around here. One of them is uh, should be a little bit familiar if you played any other Metro game in the series. I'm going to wait a little while just to get that thing off the screen. And now that that's activated, we can climb all the way up to the top of this room. We can jump through the... they're just holograms, so we can jump straight through them. And I think... Uh, where's the other one I need to scan? Is that it over there? There are some, like, random planets and, like, moons and stuff all around the place here. So this is some... I don't, I don't know what system this is. What kind of solar system is this? Oh, uh, that's the other planet. That is Zebes, which is the location of, well, the original Metroid and the Super Metroid. It's one of the main planets in the, in the Metroid series. So yeah, a few nice little references to other Metroid games there. And through this way... Oh look, another missile door. What's behind this? Guess what? It's a save station. I told you there'd be a save station nearby. And I also mentioned something about missile doors earlier on. But what's really important, at the top of the observatory, we have another power-up. And it's yet again affecting our, our, our beam arm. This time we get super missiles. Actually, it's not a beam. It's another missile. <laughs> Whoops. And uh, yeah, super missiles. It's a powerful, powerful missile attack, explosive attack, but it combines like the charge shot and missiles for like one big devastating blow. And you can only do it with regular, the regular power beam. So you need to turn the wave beam off if you want to use it. Just going to quickly restore energy because I took way too much damage on the run up to this place. No, I'm not going to save. And let's continue through the space park base. And we've got another research lab up ahead. Uh, let's activate the wave beam, jump across the room. And head on through. I think we have to go to go up an elevator. Uh, scatter bombers. So let's just go straight past him. Who cares? Took a little bit of damage, but whatever. A few crystallites in there as well. And yeah, here's the elevator up to uh, like an obs observation deck, kind of. So at the very, the very tippy top of the space pirate base. And it's taking a slow elevator ride. Oh. Weird invisible wall there again. Okay, so now we're out in the open. And... Guess what? More space parts. Where are they? Oh, they're hiding. Okay, there we go. I knew there was one around here somewhere, but... He was just strafing around the crates. Uh... What is that guy doing? That was... Wait, do... Oh, you're a shadow part. I definitely want to scan you, right? No, you're not a shadow part. I can't tell when they're close up. I thought the shadow parts had, like, a... purpley texture to them, but... Whoa, we went flying. Uh, they they all kind of look... Oh, it's the... Oh, right. It's because I had the wave beam right up in its face. And I had, like, a purple glow to it. Okay. So, yeah, I'm getting a little bit confused. I don't know when the next Shadow Pirate appears, but uh, here we have Flying Pirates. And we saw a couple of these in the last episode, but they they ran away from us. And yet again, uh, use a couple of wave beams and missiles to deal with them. Uh, because they, they like to, like, move around in the air, so... Use attacks to home in on them. I should probably use our new super missiles. Uh, charge up a charge shot like that, and then hit the missile button to release a very powerful blow, and that destroys them instantly. Normally they do a uh, like a suicide strike, or they try to try to dive bomb into. You. And uh, yeah, the super missiles just incinerate them on the spot. In fact, I don't need to bother with uh, like the wave beam and stuff, and I can just do that. Ha! Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a waste of ammo, really. Okay, let's use a bit of missile pumping. There we go. And yeah, that makes them dive bomb into you if you don't use super missiles. Pretty pretty nifty weapon, but it does use quite a lot of ammo. Uses five five missiles every time you want to do it. So make sure you're relatively stocked up. Now there is something of vital importance in this very room. But we're not supposed to be able to grab it yet. There is a sequence break we can do. Uh what we orig what we will eventually need to do is uh, destroy this thing here, which is made of ice, and it can be melted with extreme heat, but we don't have access to extreme heat just yet. And when we melt this thing, we then can shoot that stuff over there. There's like explosives on the tower. And we need to shoot over the super missile. But uh, alas, that's just a case of we need to come back to this area later on. I know, however, that you can, with a very well-timed super missile, uh, if you shoot at this wall, you can see there's like a barrier. But I know what you can do is do a double jump and get over the top of it. Actually, I think I might have destroyed too many crates there. So that I can't make it over there anymore. Well, that's a little bit disappointing, but... Yeah, I know you can sort of get this super early. And you, 
you, it, okay, it's an artifact. I, I'll just be, stop being around the bush, but yeah. It's an artifact that we have to come back for later on. In fact, we did get a hint for it in the last episode. Uh, this is the one that's talking about on top of their base. Uh, which one is it? Is it Wild? No. Life Giver? No. Chozo? No. <laughs> Nature? Got that one. Uh, world? Nope. <laughs> Spirit? Nope, that's not it. Which one is it? Elder? Okay, yeah. Oh my god. Why did I completely skip past that one? I'm an idiot. But yeah, it's talking about the tower out atop Fendrana, and the invaders are the space pirates. So yeah, this is where one of the artifacts is, but we have to come back for it. Unless you can do that weird, like, sequence break thing and just shoot a super missile over the, over the barrier, but... I don't really want to waste too much time on doing that. I I did try and like a, an alternative attempt of this, this playthrough, but I'm not really willing to waste too much time here. Anyway, let's head down to the next research lab of the pirate base, research lab Ether. And uh, that's a relevant name if uh, you're familiar with the Metroid Prime series, but uh, they're, they're not actually related. Uh, Ether is actually the planet in Metroid Prime 2, which is a coincidence because, yeah, uh, I don't think they had planned that at this point, uh, Metro Prime 2. Also, plot is about to happen. Dun, dun, dun! It's a Metroid in a container. Oh dear, how did the space pirates ever get a hold of that, I wonder? Have they been breeding them again? Do they ever learn? Well, we can get a scan on this. So yep, you have a quick scan of a Metroid and that lets it free, somehow. And uh, yeah, it does give you a little bit of combat advice if you scan it. It tells you that if it does latch onto you, uh, they have a tendency to like latch onto you and drain your health. If that ever happens, then you should enter multiple mode and lay a bomb down. Also, hello space pirate. Uh, hope I'm not interrupting anything, he says as he dives through the door there. Oh, hello. Let's see you down there as well. Okay. And I believe there's another scan point around here somewhere for more pirate data, which will once again go in the description. Because <laughs> I can't be asked having that up on the screen for too long. And that is talking about the Metroids, so that's another nice bit of lore that you'll find out later on if you're reading down below. Okay, and I think there might be another scan point in this room somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I'm sure there are more pirates as well. Where are they? Are they down there? Hello? Oh, hello. <laughs> he, he responded to my call. Hello? And then he jumps up. I reckon one's going to jump down right in front of me there. No? I'm sure there are more because the music's still playing. You can tell when their theme music plays that there's still some still alive in the room. That was a terrible shot. Hop. There we go. Nice, nice thread the needle through all the monitors there. And there's one more space park down below. I don't really want to jump off this ledge just yet because there's an item I can grab. Okay, and there we go. And there's another Metroid in the cage down there, but you don't have to free it. Unlike the first one, which breaks loose by itself. Uh, but there is something else I need to grab in this room, and it's just up there. There's a missile expansion. And in order to get to it, do a space jump up here. And we've got a nice little moth ball. Just a very narrow path that we have to roll across. Might be able to skip a little bit, maybe. Actually, no, this is quite narrow. Like a tight ceiling as well. I'd, uh, yeah, I think you have to do this. But yeah, you might want to grab this now. It's not missable. Uh, none of the missile expansions are missable. But it becomes marginally marginally more difficult later on. Okay, so there might be more lore around this somewhere. I'm not 100% sure. There's another energy tank in there. Actually, I think I can break that. Can I break that? Missiles? Yep, just a regular missile is enough to break that. And we get our second energy tank of the episode. We are we are brimming with life right now. And let me have a quick scan around the room, because I'm sure there's more pirate data. Oh, hello. What did I just say? <laughs> and there's probably one more... Oh, it's on the other side. Okay, that's cool. Get them both in quick succession there. And I'm just going to have a quick scan around the room, see if there's any more. There's an elevator over here if you want to use it and get back up to where we were. I don't really need to do that just yet. 
Mm, I could free this Metroid if I really wanted to. Don't really gain anything by it, but... Yeah, might as well. Uh, I wonder how much damage Super Missiles do. Well, it stunned it enough for... Oh. Well, that died really quickly with Super Missiles. Though I don't want to be doing that too often. Okay, the way out of this room is, like, hidden under a stack of crates. I don't know why they did that. Uh, who, the space pirates are just blocking the way onwards. And down here we have an ice beetle who's just blocking the entrance to the room. As soon as I get down there, he's going to hit me. So that's not really fair. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's deal with you ahead of time. Drop down. There's probably another one. Hello. Yep. As I suspected, they always travel in packs. There would never be one single beetle anywhere. Oh! Are you a, you a shadow pirate? Please? I want to scan you. Nope, just another regular one. How disappointing. Is there only one in this entire base? That's really weird. It was just serving as the gatekeeper for the main entrance there. Okay, here we have another tall room with another important upgrade in it. Also there's a Metroid behind the screen. It's just a bit passive at the moment. Oh, flying pirates as well, I forgot about them. Okay, wave beam down there and missile and missile. That should... Oh, oh, I missed. And I missed. And I shot. And I shot. And I missed. I shot. <laughs> and yeah, that's a little GG reference there. Okay, so in this room, the main purpose is to head around the room. And these aren't pirate data. And these are relevant scans, because we need to scan them in order to open the tank at the very bottom, in which there is another another upgrade for us to grab. And I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit by jumping off. And landing back on this ledge. Uh, energy there. Don't need any energy. Where's the next monitor? Is that on the next floor down? It's down there. Yep. Up on down, skip a few floors. I'm being shot at by something. And yep, there's another scan point. I'm just gradually getting rid of this force field. Can't do it all in one fell swoop. No, 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 you have to make it as tedious as possible. Okay, let's shoot you with a wave beam, then a missile. And there's another one down there. If I can lock on, that'd be nice. I guess because it was behind like a fence, I couldn't lock onto it. I don't understand this game sometimes. And is that all the, the turrets? All the turrets? All the pirates? Anymore? I just jumped headfirst into that then. Okay, so at the very bottom, uh, the one last monitor is right here. And this deactivates the entire force field. There is a white door in the distance there, as you can see. Of course, we can't unlock that yet. We need a new weapon. And it might be coming soon, possibly, that next weapon we need. But anyway, this upgrade is not its not for white doors. This is the first of our visor upgrades. This now gives us the thermal visor. I say the first of our visor upgrades because I don't count the scan visor as an upgrade. It's like there at the beginning. But yes, the thermal visor is now a new visor. Activated from the same screen as the thermal visor. Uh, the uh, scan visor, even. Uh, we just need to point down to the left. And upon picking that up, kills the power to the room, and also makes it pitch black. So yeah, they're sort of thrusting us into the deep end here. Now we need to use the thermal visor. And now we can see in the dark, and... Uh, well, there were space pirates there all along. And I can't actually tell what type of pirate you are. I can scan you there, right? I can't even see it. Where's he gone? Hello? Oh! Ah, I can't scan them because they're invisible. Yeah, they're invisible unless I use the thermal visor. Okay, it's a little bit disappointing. But uh, yeah, with the thermal visor we can now see them. And yeah, we can blow them apart. This is a really interesting effect, I must say. I don't know how they did it with like the GameCube technology. It, are, are they just layering like a, a new texture over the top of other textures? I'm not really... 100% sure, like, game terminology here, but yeah, it's like a really neat effect, but I'm sure they just, you know, it's just replacing the texture that was already on it with something else, as you can see. It changes very quickly though, I don't know if the GameCube crossed that. Are both textures loaded in at the same time and it just flips between them? I, like, it, it boggles my mind, to be honest, this game, for a GameCube game. It's very, very stylish. Although the Wii version actually had a bit of a downgrade. I don't, I don't think I mentioned it at all, but it's something to do with like the water effects. 
in like the original GameCube version, if you shot at water, it would ripple. But that's been removed in this game. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, uh, just a little bit, a little bit of trivia there that I know. Oh, thought I could skip up there, but I cannot. There's another Metroid. So there, and there is something of interest in the wall. Uh, can't see it from this angle. So let me steal this Metroid. Die, 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 die! Stop growing bigger. What the hell? They just start inflating. But uh, yeah, there's something over here, and it's some kind of weird. Weird icon inside the wall. Looks like a valve or something. But yeah, we need to shoot that with the wave with the wave beam. Not visible on the regular spectrum, but that's like an electrical. Uh, I'm not sure what the word is, but yeah, it powers doors. Hmm. Wonder where that's, wonder where that's relevant. And uh, through a new enemy. I might have seen one before. I think it was what alerted the pirates as soon as we entered the entered the base. And yeah, they're sentry drones, and as you can see, they interfere with our visors massively. Also, my god, there's two of them and they're like pelting me with everything they have right now. Please stop. And uh, yeah, they're very vulnerable to electric-based attacks, so wave beam is the way to go. How did that miss? I shot and I missed. And is that the end of them? Yeah, okay. There we go. And he just explodes and that unlocks the doors. Every time we see sentry drones they always seem to lock the doors in the area. And not only is that first room with the thermal visor completely covered in darkness but every other room in the base is now dark as well so we have to use the thermal visor so that space part dropping in over there so let me come out and now we need to use the elevator to rise up oh oh yeah the turrets aren't visible on the thermal spectrum so they're sort of like semi-invisible you can sort of vaguely recognize their outline i think that's all of them okay let's head on back up there's probably more pirates. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, speak of the devil. Where are you going? And why are you, like, jumping like a madman all over the place there? Okay, there we go. Down. And, uh, yeah, this is what I meant by grab the missile upgrade as soon as possible, because if you try and do it in the dark, yeah, you... <laughs> a little bit little bit more a little bit more blind. But, yeah, yeah, we've already grabbed that one, so... Oh, I fell off. He fell over. And the elevator is lowering down again. So yeah, grab that missile upgrade uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, okay, he's just going to get wedged on the fence there. Can he enter the elevator? Can I like descend with him? Oh, he can jump down though. That's weird, I thought space pirates were like, confined to their floors they were originally on. But no, I guess that guy can like, jump off the ledge and stuff. Oh, got his foot caught in like the the walkway as well. Is there going to be like another space part on the ceiling somewhere? I can hear noises. It's very like ambient, this, this area. You got like the growls of space parts and stuff. There's another turret over there. I can tell by the lock on but it didn't have like a thermal reading. Okay, let's hop on up. And no, there were no space parts. Oh weird. Okay, so back through here, we now need to head back up to up the top floor area. Excuse me, I can't see. <laughs> uh, I think around this point is where we can turn the thermal visor off. It starts to get a little bit lighter. Actually, no, this tunnel's still pitch black, but yeah, through here should be fine. Yeah, okay, so now I'm out in the open, and now we need to head back the way we came. Bit, bit of a long bit of backtracking. I guess it's just to get us used to the thermal visor mechanics, because every other room in the base is shrouded in darkness, aside from like the exterior bits, obviously. So you know, they're outside. Funny that. And let's watch for you. We dive into the ground. Let's time you from a distance. And there we go. I feel like they sort of semi-target you there. Actually, I don't need to deal with these guys, I can just 
proceed onwards if I wanted to. Ah. Well, never mind. Pointless flying pirates right there, because we can just go straight on through to the elevator. And let's head back to the observatory. And it's all in darkness again. Great, thanks. I would like to be able to see properly, please. No enemies in that tunnel. And here we are back at the observatory, which is slightly darker. Like, I don't know what's going on here. I guess it's because it's got, got an open ceiling. But yeah, the entire ground floor is like pitch black, but the upper floor is, is visible as well. I did not want to fall off there. I wanted to head to the save station. Oh well, let's uh, deal with the space pirates, why not? Are you a, sh are you a shadow pirate? Nope, never mind. <laughs> always always going to try now. Until I can tell the difference between the two, I'm just going to keep trying. <laughs> okay, let me head back up to the save station. I think I'm going to leave it here for this episode. Uh, otherwise it's going to be a little bit a little bit unbalanced with this episode and the next. So yeah, let me head up to the save room and end it here. So that's it for now. In the next episode we'll return to the entrance of the Space Pirate base. And then with our new thermal visor and super missiles, we'll be able to do something about the door that we saw in the courtyard earlier. So yeah, I'll see you next time for a little bit more of Fendrana Drifts and the Space Pirate, Space Pirate Lab. Bye for now.